All right. My name is John Graham. I'm the Elementary Digital Learning Specialist at the Maine Department of Education. And I get to wear my substitute teacher hat today, filling in for Emma Banks, our computer science specialist, who is, is double booked during computer science ed week. Go figure. Um, so we're so pleased to have people from Lego Education joining us today to help you with your unboxing and getting started with your um, Lego kits, which some of you might have. We saw in our last session, some people had them sitting right next to them, all organized and set up, which was so fantastic to see. And I know some people have them there and they're still waiting on them, um, taking them out of the box or whatnot. So we're looking forward to any questions that people will have. We'll have probably some time at the end for a little Q&A. But as things come up, feel free to drop them in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, and if people want to introduce themselves, just mm -hmm. where you're from, what your capacity or uh, what your role is in at your school, if you want to drop that in the chat, that would be helpful as well. And I will turn it over to Morgan and her team. Um, excuse me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Robert. Um, so, so I took, plugged my camera in late, something happened, and now my screen's telling me I, you need to let me in. This is Rob Taylor. I can hear you, but I can't see you. I changed the background so it's blurry. Yeah, you might need, you might need to bounce out and bounce back in. This meeting recorded. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Everybody needs, all right, try that again. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we're so glad to have you here today to learn a little bit more about Spike Prime. And we're so excited to have you um, as part of the Lego education piece of the Mobile Computer Science Lab Initiative. Um, I just wanna thank you guys for choosing Lego education and know that we are here to support you. I have two really fantastic trainers with me here today, uh, Michelle Dudick and Susan McGrath, who will introduce themselves, um, but you're in really good hands for them. today. And, uh, oh, yeah. Can I have kick it off? And I just think there's somebody who's not muted. Um, so I think we will ask that everybody um, stays muted. Um, it does look like Possibly, um, Robert, you're signed in twice, and sometimes if that happens, um, when you unmute yourself, what's happening is you're getting the feedback from your two devices. Um, so just be aware of um, be aware of that. So Zoom can be a little little funky sometimes, but welcome everybody. We're really happy to be uh, here with you this afternoon. Um, you know, it's a you know crazy end of the day, crazy time of year, but we we love doing this. Um, we are here to introduce you to um, teaching with Spike Prime and really kind of that unboxing and um, taking a look at all of that. So I'm Michelle, I am from New Hampshire. And so I consider myself your neighbor, um, which is great because I don't always get to do local events. So it's wonderful to um, be with uh, those of you that are so close to me. And um, I have been a Lego education trainer since 2017. I love this, it's so much fun. These solutions are amazing. Um, and I am also a high school teacher um, and I teach uh, for the Virtual Learning Academy. So you might be familiar with, um, with that school in New Hampshire as well. And I've got Susan here with me as well. And I am Susan McGrath. I uh, am in Lexington, Kentucky. And I work for Fayette County Public Schools. We have about 40,000 students in Central Kentucky. And I taught high school math and computer science for 24 years. Um, and then the past six years, don't do that math. Uh, I have been in technology integration for our district. I'm a district digital learning coach or technology integration specialist. Um, and I focus on STEM and Lego. Um, I've been a Lego certified teacher trainer for about four years now, and I have the wonderful opportunity to work um, with teachers um, all over the United States and work with some great people in Lego education. Um, and I do this because I feel that uh, Lego education has solutions for classrooms in terms of uh, bringing playful learning and creativity 
uh, collaboration and communication to our students, uh, especially in our world full of technology. And so, so excited for your um, initiative in Maine. Uh, jealous I'm not up there, although I don't like the call that much, but um, Michelle and I are so grateful to be here today to support you at the start of your journey um, with Spike Prime. So I'm gonna have her take it away. Right. Great. So a lot of you have kind of introduced yourselves in the chat, which we appreciate. Thank you. Um, our goals today are to cover, you know, that question, how do I prepare my Spike Prime sets to use in the classroom? Um, and then also what Lego education resources are available to educators? Um, if you don't mind going back to the chat and throwing in there for us, do you have your solutions, your kits in your classroom? And if you do, have you opened them up? Have you used them? Are you experienced with them at all? Um, it's nice for us to have a little bit of an idea of um, kind of where you're at in this journey um, as we kind of dive into our, our presentation as well. Right? While you're typing that in there, um, our agenda is fairly brief this evening, but we are going to cover getting organized. So what does that mean? How do you keep all of these elements in these bricks all in you know, one place and safe and organized? Um, we will take a look at the Spike app itself. Um, you know, there are a couple of different versions of the Spike app. Take a look at that, how that works. Uh, we will walk you through connecting and renaming your hub. That's an important uh, part of this whole process. So we'll go through that. We'll take a look at the getting started lessons, which is a great place to start both as an educator and with your students. And we'll cover um, learning through play. So what does that mean? What does that look like? How does that work in your classrooms with your students? And again, we'll take a look at some of those additional resources that Lego Education has to offer you um, as support. Awesome. It looks like, Michelle, we've got um, a lot of people who either don't have them or they just got them or haven't and haven't used them yet. Um, and we've got a couple, just a couple of people um, who Tammy, it looks like Tammy's gotten into them. That's awesome. And she's going to use them in class for the first time next week. So um, hopefully we can help you with some, some uh, tips for getting started out there next week. I love it. Great. We will, um, well, this is being recorded, so you can view it again later, um, but we will also save some time at the end of our hour um, for you to ask questions. But as we go through, if something pops up, if you have a question, if you have an idea or have some experience and you want to throw that out there, um, please utilize that chat area. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, we can throw some links in there if we need to. So uh, it's just helpful for, for everybody if we just use that chat area. Okay, great. So we're going to start with the exciting unboxing um, and what's actually here. So when you open that big cardboard box for the first time, um, you will have several of these um, very sturdy yellow plastic boxes with these white lids. Um, they will say a spike on the side um, and they are full of about 523 different elements. Um, that white lid on top that kind of sits in and clicks in on top makes for an amazing building surface. Um, those little lips around the edge help prevent some of those bricks from going flying. So it's, uh, it's a, nice, a nice building surface if that's, um, that's something that you wanna use with your, with your students. You'll also notice that you have these white sorting trays. Um, when you first get, um, get this, this set, um, not, they, the elements won't be sorted, but they come in plastic bags that are pre-organized. So you just have to open them up and put them in the uh, appropriate trays. Now you will notice when you open yours up, oh, here it is, sorry, that you have um, this card on top. And it's two-sided. Um, this is the, the top side or the front side. And it tells you right off the bat that you can go to legoeducation.com slash start to get started. And it also suggests that you pop the battery into that hub right off. Um, that's helpful because then you can get it um, charging. But on the other side, this is essentially your directions. Um, you know, you've got the outline of 
each of your, um, your sorting trays and all of the different elements that go inside of there. So that is helpful to initially get organized, but also to stay organized. Um, or if your students are looking for elements for their builds, um, they have this guide here for them to figure out exactly um, what you have where. Now, anything that's shown on the, the outside here, those are some of the larger elements and those are housed in the bottom of that yellow, um, that yellow container, okay? So the, the white pieces kind of sit on top and, um, and then the bigger elements are in the bottom, which uh, makes it very helpful. Okay, um, in there you have um, a large motor. You've got your hub. You can see that in the picture. You have two medium motors. So three motors total, which is fantastic. You've got a touch sensor. Okay. And you've got the color sensor and a distance sensor. So what all sorts of, yes, yeah. So all sorts of great sensors here um, and motors for your building. Um, let's see. As far as classroom management goes, um, a couple of suggestions. We're gonna talk about labeling and um, a labeling and naming protocol, but whenever possible, if you can um, assign a particular group of students per set or kit, that's really helpful. It helps them to feel responsible for that kit um, and ensure that some of those elements um, remain you know, there and in one place. Um, so if you know, I'm doing a unit next month and um, you know, Susan and Sarah are in my, my classroom, um, I'm going to assign them the same kit for the duration of that whenever possible. Um, that way, you know, they feel responsible for keeping track of all of their elements and putting them back. And when they come back the next day, they know, you know, what to expect and they know that their pieces are, are all there. Um, so that's one helpful hint. Now you also have, so mine's been put together, but in your box, you have a sticker card. Um, and that has all of the stickers that you'll put on the edges of those, um, those white sorting trays. So Susan's trying to point it out kind of with a pointer. I'm gonna, mine are full, but I'm gonna kind of hold it up here. You can see that those stickers go on the inside edge here. And again, those serve as directions. Um, what what elements go in those boxes. Now, I have done this, so I'm speaking from experience here. Do not put the stickers on the bottom of, um, of the, the container, the spots, because once you put the bricks on top, then you have no idea what's supposed to go there. Um, I really, I have done that before. So make sure that you put them on the sides, that way they're easy to see and access. Um, the other thing that you'll notice on that sticker sheet is you have blank um, labels. And like I said, we're gonna talk about labeling in just a minute, but you'll, you have blank sticker labels for um, the hub, the box itself, all of the motors and all of the sensors. Um, and that becomes a really important element um, and aspect as well, okay? Um, a couple other classroom management tips. Um, they're small Lego bricks. It's inevitable that some of them will get dropped um, I've also dropped an entire box before, so that does happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, cleanup can, can be interesting, um, but have a um, like one a centrally located container where at the you know after your students leave or at the end of the day. If you or someone else happens to find um, an element or a brick just kind of on the floor or just out somewhere, instead of randomly putting it back into um, a box, any box, it goes in that one container. And that way, you know, Susan comes back tomorrow and she is missing um, one of those magenta bricks. She can go and look, you know, perhaps she dropped it and somebody picked it up. She can go look in that lost and found. It also helps for, um, you know, if you have like an organization or sorting day and kind of just getting things put back together. Um, 
Uh, another important thing that comes in the kit itself is a separate box of replacement pieces. Uh, I cannot stress enough and recommend highly enough that you take all of those replacement elements, those boxes of replacement pieces, and put them somewhere else, put them somewhere safe, out of the reach of your students. Um, you want to keep them for when you need them. Um, I don't recommend opening them and mixing them up with all of the other elements. So those are, they come in handy eventually, um, but I do suggest that you kind of set those to the side. Um, as your students are building, it's nice to have uh, kind of a, a saying or a mantra in case a student drops a brick or several bricks. Um, one that a lot of schools and teachers like to use is that uh, I drop a brick and I'll say loud enough for my peers to hear, you know, Lego down. And that signals everybody else in the classroom to kind of freeze and just give that student or students a chance to find that element, put it back. Um, and then you say Lego found and everybody can resume. It is really, really helpful. Uh, you have a lot of students building at the same time and it just kind of helps to keep things um, all in one place and neat and organized as well. Okay. Susan, did you have any other classroom management tips that you wanted to throw in there? I think I know yeah. the chat's been popping up. I haven't been able to read yeah. it. No, you're good. We were sharing, I was sharing about press and seal because I am a little OCD about my kit. So from one OCD person to hopefully not many others, you, you know, it's going to get messy. Things are going to spill. Like Michelle said, like it's inevitable. Things are going to get dropped or lost. Don't sweat it because the opportunity for your students is is worth every missed brick, messy, you know, tray. Um, it, you know, if you want to once a month or every so often have like a tray cleaning day or a tray organization time, um, because time timing is usually the big issue when you're bringing in um, the kits and lessons um, and we want time for reflection and communication and all that. Um, so maybe once in a while, you know, if you have a few students in your robotics club and they have some time after, or if you have students that can stay after or just in time during class with a homeroom where you just pull them out and do like a little spring cleaning or, or something like that, that might be my, my tip. Um, but I, I loved all your tips there, Michelle. I love the lost and found jar because you can just take that around with you everywhere the kits are. And then when a student needs one after careful examination of their trays, because that's what I notice is sometimes students will say, I can't find that piece. And, you know, it's right there in front of them. So um, just giving them a minute to, to look and ponder before they go to that lost and found jar. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's. They're great, so. The Island of Lost Lego Bin, I love it. That is the best title I've heard for a lost and found jar. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, thank you. Okay, so labeling and naming. Um, like I said, you get blank stickers in there to label. Definitely you want to label the exterior of that box. So somewhere on the outside. Um, you may want to label the lid and the box, but if you're only going to label one, definitely label the yellow box and not just the lid. Um, like I said, labeling both is fine, but make sure the yellow box is labeled. Um, you'll want to label your hub. We'll talk about renaming the hub and the app in a little bit, but you want to label the hub. You want to make sure that you label each of those sensors um, and each of those motors. Um, and sometimes um, teachers find it helpful to label this, um, this organizational card as well. Uh, you can also laminate this. You can also make copies of this, hang it up in your classroom. It's a great um, reference card, okay? And I didn't point this out earlier, but this is your measuring tool up here. It's a one-to-one. -one. So if you're looking for the right size axle, for example, you can hold it up to, um, to those or you can just count the studs as well, okay? Um, so naming becomes and labeling becomes really, really important. Um, and that way, you know, again, just that organization piece and keeping all of the elements that belong together, together. Um, so you don't end up with three medium motors in one kit and one in another um, and, and things like that, okay? I think we have, yeah, we can, okay. 
So to label them, um, you can see there's a great diagram here, um, suggested places to put the stickers. Um, permanent marker works best by far. I can't get anything else to work really well on those stickers. Um, Susan suggests uh, using a label maker sometimes. Awesome idea. Um, so label everything as much as you possibly can. Um, the bags that come in the set are numbered, so it makes it really easy to just do your, you know, open it up and put them in the right spots for that initial organization. And again, you want to label the hub, the sensors, the motors, the lid card, um, the box itself. Okay. Um, naming protocol becomes very important as well. Um, I name mine, my last name, and then a series of numbers. So Judec one for example, do deck two, I'd have a classroom set of do deck and, you know, 30 or 15, whatever I happen to have. Um, it is important, um, I think, to work with the other uh, people in your school or your department, um, your district even, to have a, a consistent naming protocol. Um, and you can come up with whatever works best and whatever is logical for, for you and your situation. Um, but it's, nice to have that consistency. Um, and again, we'll talk about labeling or um, renaming the hubs to match what that box label is as well. And we'll do that when we dive into the, the software a little bit. Okay. Right. Are you ready for that dive? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. The, uh, oh, we've got a question. Do you recommend keeping pieces in individual zipper plastic bags within the kits? I have teachers that do that, Jennifer. Um, I, if you have the stickers on the side of the trays, it's there. I don't, what do you think, Michelle? I think it's really a personal preference. Um, it may help to keep things contain a little a little bit more, but ultimately they're going to have to open those plastic bags anyways to get the elements for their for their builds. It could end up being a little more cumbersome. Um, so it's kind of a personal choice. And then Tammy's asking, do we put the supplemental boxes that came with the kits inside the box? No, those are those replacement pieces that I suggest you put elsewhere. Um, truly, a central location, uh, not where the kids have access to them. That's for um, you to decide when those need to be, you know, be pulled out and used. So yeah. definitely pull those out of. Um... Are you? Oh, do you have that? Uh, maybe I could ask Sarah. Do they have the? Uh, robotic, like the competition. Yeah. The expansion boxes. Yes. Oh, so that is okay. different. So yeah. You, you know, if you're using those, yeah, bring them out. You, they don't need to be part of spike of your just classroom. Like if you're using them in the classroom, but um, if they have expansion ones, that would be for like, if you're doing competitions, um, if you have personal learning kits, which are in smaller boxes, um, those would be for hybrid lessons. And when we get into the unit and lessons, I'll show you where those would apply. So, um, so yeah, so Tammy's saying, yes, that's what they are. Okay, yeah, we'll okay. get into that, Tammy, in just a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up. That's perfect. Um, because we have separate lessons that that can go with. Yes, ma'am. And the short answer is no, those personal learning kits, those elements don't get mixed in with the kits. Those, yeah, um, again, we'll get into that later, but that doesn't get mixed in with that yellow solution yeah. kit. Um, I'm excited you got those too. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, okay. I would, I, can I go back to Jennifer's question real quick? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she made me think of, I have had teachers before, and this is more on the front end for teachers, but I've had some teachers who have at the beginning of using them, and I, I don't suggest this, but I have, if you um, are thinking about just starting out and they've actually had like teacher assistants and parents that come in and so forth to do this too, it's a lot of work, but have just pulled the pieces to use for particular lessons to start. Um, and they actually have like co-teach classes with some special needs students 
And so they pulled just the pieces they needed for lesson. It's a lot on the front end. I don't recommend it, but that might be something. It just cleared me in with the zipper bags that that teacher had put like specific pieces they were going to use in zipper bags um, to pull out. But that's not, um, I wouldn't suggest you that. But yeah, bag number 13 is the extra one. Thanks, Tammy. That's the extra pieces for the spike prime. And that might be something you want to pull or keep at the bottom of your box. Michelle, do you have anything to say about bag 13? Um, I, 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 would keep them I would keep them separate. Yeah. 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 Okay, good questions. All right, let's get into the app. So there's like three pieces to this. You've got what you're doing right now, which is unboxing, getting ready to bring those in your classroom. Then there's gonna be the lessons part of things. And then we've got our app with our coding and our build. So you've got a lot of different components going on here. So once you get everything set up, and we're ready to go. We're gonna give you kind of a challenge. You're gonna have some homework. We're gonna try and give you homework tonight, but um, it'll be really fun homework, I promise. Uh, the app is, is definitely part of what we need to look at um, to get into the building and the programming. So that component piece of it. Um, I'm just gonna go through a few more slides and then I'm gonna jump out of here, but we're gonna to go to um, a place where you can find the downloaded app. Um, and so this might be where you have um, Chromebooks or Mac devices or Android um, or PCs, and you want to have a downloaded app. And this might depend on your school or your IT department on how that gets rolled out. I'm gonna show you where that is so you can share it with their appropriate people, which might even be you, um, but uh, where that downloaded uh, version is. And then I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna work from the web app. Um, this is relatively new, and it is a place where you can go just on the internet to get right into uh, Spike Prime. So we've got two things going on. We have a downloaded app and we have a web app. And I'm gonna tell you the big difference between the two, but they're basically identical, um, except for just one thing. Um, but we are in, um, we have just gotten our Spike app update. So where you see this 2.0.7, that is old news. We are now on 3.0 that just came out December 1st, I think. Uh, and so we are now in, you're gonna be using this new app with um, quicker speed uh, for programming and everything. So we're really excited um, about that. Um, so I'm going to show you where uh, those two things live. Um, and we're going to start at legoeducation.com. And it's uh, making sure we're in the US version here. And we're going to jump into the teach menu, which you're going to see on the side here. And then we're going to drop down to the spike app to start. We're going to look at two pieces of this today. With our time that we have together, we're going to look at the spike app. Um, and then the units and lesson plans once we get out of the app. Um, and so I'm gonna jump out of here. There we go. And I'm gonna go on to the internet here, which I'm hoping you all guys can see. And I'm gonna go to legoeducation.com or I'm just going to, oops, spell it right. Do education.lego.com. You can Google it, you'll find it. Um, just make sure you're in that US version up here at the top. And that's where we're at. This is what that website looks like. If you just wanna follow along and then go to it later, you can, or if you wanna follow it on your device too. You'll then go to the teach drop down here at the top. We got shop and teach. And then you'll go to the Spike mm -hmm. app, yes. We're not seeing that website. If you want to oh. um, check that share, I wanted to like new share. Thank you. That's it. I had it last time. Can you see it now? Yeah. All right. All right. So education.lego.com or legoeducation.com. And then over here in the drop down, you'll see teach. 
and then great teacher resources, Spike app is where we're gonna go first. And while you're kind of getting into that or you're just watching on the Zoom here, all of this is free, 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 free. And it's always being updated and added to um, wonderful resources uh, that are here. And they're all for you to look at all the time. Like I've been in technology for a while now. I know things cost. You know, it was wonderful during our virtual learning because things were free and now we have to pay for all of them. But um, this is always free. Once you get those kits, you get everything else for free. The teacher resources, the unit and lesson plans, the app, the updates, all of it. Um, and so that's one thing I really appreciate from Lego Education is that I'm not having a subscription service. I don't have to buy more parts. Um, I am an EV3 and we do person at heart, which are some of our retired solutions, but these new solutions as part of our Lego learning system are absolutely amazing. So um, I'm excited for that. So I'm gonna go to the Spike app here. And this again is where I'm gonna find my download information. So it's automatically gonna push out what computer I'm on. So I am on a PC right now. So it says Windows 10, but um, if you're on a Mac, it'll go to Mac. If you're on an iPad, I'll go for iPad and so forth. Chromebook, it'll say Chromebook. Um, and again, depending on how that works in your district um, or at your school, if you have access to download it, here it is. If you want to put it on your personal device that you're using, you can do it when you get, like if you're at home, you could do it right now. Or when you get home, if you have a personal device, you could do it. Um, but most of the districts we talk to, there's some kind of protocol for that. Um, and they can uh, download there and you could show them where that's at. There's system requirements and so forth. Um, that's probably not your, um, you know, your responsibility, maybe it is, but that's where that is. Um, so uh, when we want to go to get that app, that downloaded app, um, again, you go to education.lego.com, go to Spike app, and then um, you, you've got it right there. Um, but we also have the web version and the web version is Spike dot lego education dot com so spike dot lego education dot com and then th you're going to see now exactly what you would see in the downloaded version okay so this is where you access spike essential and spike prime um, and we're going to we're talking about spike prime here today so Another thing just to mention real quick is that this is what your students see. So there is no like teacher platform versus student platform. They see exactly the same thing you're seeing right now. Uh, so they get into the app the same way, downloaded on their Chromebook or wherever it's housed for them um, and your devices. And same for this website. You're not going to see it. They're not going to see anything different than what you see. Um, the lesson part, obviously, they they won't see that's that's kind of where the teacher information lies, and that's inside that education.lego.com website. But in terms of the app itself, same like you're what you're seeing, what you're seeing right now on my screen or on your screen is exactly what um, they're going to see. So they'll click on Spike Prime, um, and then. Look what we got here. Oh, hold on. Talking about what's new with Spike App 3. Um, so it's giving you some information about um, updating your hub, um, improved Bluetooth connection. I'll learn more. There's one more there. Python coming um, to the web app um, and then updating to Spike App 3. Uh, and now mine's telling me to update my hub. I don't think I have to update my hub, but we'll see. <laughs> Can I, don't show me this again. Okay, maybe it wants me to, let me go back. Okay, so I'm gonna turn mine on. I'm gonna plug mine in here too. So uh, this big hub, no, mine's not green. So we're gonna update mine. Michelle, did you update yours? <laughs> I was having trouble updating my hub before, okay. right before this. 
Okay, so this is great because you can actually see the, the hub update. So I'm having to update my hub. I actually plugged it into the USB. Um, it comes with that USB cord. I don't know if we mentioned that before you saw it in the picture. It has a USB cord. Um, and I turn it on with my big button, which it says I've got my white button there. And I'm gonna click on, this is the dialog box that pops up. So I click on it um, to make it connect. So I had to click on the name of it to connect it. And then we'll see if mine can, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so mine does need to be updated. So that's my update. So now mine's updating. While it's updating, we can talk about the platform here. The first part of it is getting started. Um, this is a wonderful place to start. And if your students have no idea how to code, they can get in here and code. It is a wonderful um, tutorial through all of the um, uh, motors and sensors um, and the hub itself with the light matrix on it. Um, wonderful place to start. You'll see on the side, We've got uh, the start, which is same as here. Um, we've got the units, which is where they'll go to to get to the lesson you want. All the units are housed in here for them to access and you'll just lead them to the one uh, that you want them to go to. There's building instructions if you need them separately than from what's in the units, but all of the lessons will house um, the coding, which is scratch programming, um, again, they don't need to know how to scratch program to get into it. They'll have the scratch programming box they need. They'll have a dialog box that leads them through, unless it's one of our more advanced um, open builds. And then they'll also have um, the canvas and the building instructions. So all of that will be included in here. I'm gonna see if I can get my other app because it's taking too long for me. So I have a downloaded app too. Let's see if this works. I'm wasting your time. Although by the time I get this to work, oh, I can't do both at the same time. Dang it. Okay, 68%. I'm going to go out to the lessons real quick. We'll yes, cover that yes. and then we'll come back to it. So in back, sorry about that, up to education.lego.com. Let's go back to that website real quick. So we can show you like all the units and lesson plans that are available. Um, I go again to that teach drop down where we were just at the spike app and I go to units and lessons. So I click on that. And then this is 400 plus lessons for all of the different solutions uh, that we have. So you'll go to products and then you'll click on Spike Prime. So that's the best way just to get to what you need in terms of Spike Prime. So the teach again, going to teach, units and lessons, then the drop down for products to Spike Prime. And then here's all the great, absolutely free units. Um, this kind of gives you a nice overview of what we have uh, in terms of, um, is it a STEAM lesson? Is it computer science and coding? Um, is it science? Uh, is it computer science? And there's more down here. Uh, supplementary lessons too that aren't part of a unit, um, which I'm gonna go to that because I know what, one of my favorites is in here. Um, After that, Susan, um, do you wanna hit on one of the hybrid? Um, yes. Units? Okay. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Um, oh, where's my hopper? Did they take hopper out of here? I'm not gonna be happy. Well, I'm just gonna get, they did take hopper out. Oh, I'm so mad. Anyway, hopper is a great um, one to look at and I can search it in a minute, but let's just go to one that Michelle mentioned here with um, the hybrid lesson, because that's a good idea. Okay. No, we could do goal. Does goal have a hybrid? No. Let me go up to. Doing life. Uh, okay. Yeah. So right here, do you see this little yellow box? Those personal learning kits, those extra kits that you guys got that you were asking about before. That's what those are for. So inside of these, they were basically for when we were in virtual and we had. Um, we had kits that were made specifically for that, for students to take home, which was amazing. Um, and so I'm just gonna go light hacks real quick. Not all the lessons have a hybrid lesson. Oh, break dance. That's another good one too, to start with. Um, let's see if we can find one. 
there we go. So this one, you'll see it has a yellow hybrid button. Um, and so I can click on it. And then this is a regular lesson for your Spike Prime set, but you'll see down here in the teacher support, it'll say hybrid learning resources. So that's big for, um, for those smaller kits that you got. But let's just talk about overall these lessons really quickly. So they follow the five E's in terms of a lesson structure. And this is basically your playbook for lessons. Um, there's gonna be an overview. There's usually a video for you to watch till you know what's gonna be happening. And usually a video for students to watch over here in the unit. This one might not have one, um, but I'll tell you about the lesson, um, the engage, explore, explain, elaborate, evaluate, all the questioning you can use, uh, vocabulary if you need it, how to engage students, there's a video, um, questions and answers. Um, then uh, it'll talk to you about explore uh, and timings for those two. Uh, there's explain, and then there's the elaborate and evaluate all of this for you to look at and, and go over before you bring into your classroom. Um, then we've got our hybrid resources, again, that I mentioned before, as well as uh, key objectives, things you'll need. Sometimes it's just something extra, like this is more of an open build, but usually maybe you need a ruler or some tape um, to mark a starting line or mark a distance. Um, very small amount of tools. There's nothing extravagant that you would have in your classroom already, most likely. Um, additional resources. And then um, usually you'll see state standards or national standards in here, like our NGSS or um, ISTE standards. And then th there'll be hybrid learning resources here. Um, so those are the lessons that you can use those smaller kits for is those hybrid lessons. Michelle, did you have anything to add to that while I'm trying to go over here to see if my hubs? That's, that's exactly it. Um, everything you can possibly need as far as lesson plans go, and then some um, yeah. are there, are there. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so this is when you get your app updated or your hub updated, excuse me, um, then this is gonna be kind of the intro to um, going and then we'll just click start. Um, this is a nice prepare section um, for what Michelle went over. Basically, Michelle covered everything in there, but you can go there if you need some extra support. I'm gonna hit start and then um, I'm ready to go. This is the start. So I'm gonna show you this because it's a great place to take your kids. These are smaller lessons. Um, I would say that in the course, there's the hopper. Look, they put it right there for me. Um, I would say that if you wanted to do one and two, you could cover that in a, in a you know, 30 minute class, 45 minutes tops uh, in terms of just getting into what the motors and sensors are, getting your classroom management with the kits. Um, yeah, there's no build for these right here. Um, it's just plugging in and, and using them, which I love um, because they can really explore that and not have to worry about getting into it right into a build and then make up build a hopper. They put it right in the front for me now. Great place to start. It's a fun build. Um, it talks you can bring it into science concepts. Um, you can have a hopper race. Uh, it's just a wonderful place to get started with your students. And most of my teachers start there and also with the break dance one, um, which is great too. So I'm gonna click on this really quickly so we have some time for questions and talk to you about the renaming and the connecting. Um, and so this is my uh, canvas right here. You see it's kind of dotted. Over here is gonna be my uh, where my code blocks are like you would see in Scratch, if you've seen that before. Um, and it's only gonna give me the blocks I need for the lesson itself, which is nice. But if you have those students or, that are kind of um, accelerating through and you need some differentiation, you can click down here and see more bricks um, for Spike Prime. So I'm gonna click on that and kind of blow your mind here, boom. 
No, well, maybe not. Then let me show you. Yet. I didn't blow your mind at all. <laughs> that was really, really sad. Okay, I'll do it in a minute. Okay, so over here though is the lesson cards. So this little like shade that you can make these bigger or smaller. Um, you can also uh, scroll up and down here to see all of the card. Um, and, but you can get this out of the way and close it. But it's all in these lessons. This is what's great is it's telling me what to do, like click next so that students know how that works. Um, most of this, you'll already have the battery installed. You'll have done that when you um, go to do your naming protocols, because this is why we're doing this right now. When you go in to your kit and you're doing all of the naming that Michelle talked about with the stickers, pull out the hub you're gonna see that the battery is in a separate white box. Take that battery out and connect it to your hub. And then when you're finished unboxing, go back in, take out the hubs or do it while you're doing it. And you're gonna come in and do what I'm doing right now. You're gonna make sure it's updated. And then when you first plug it in, it's gonna ask you to name it. Now, you're gonna also have to show your students how to connect it. So that's why we're doing this too. But you're gonna have that student that learns how to rename the hub and then gives it a really nice name <laughs> that we can't say on air. So it happens all the time. So you need to know how to make sure to rename the hub and name it at the beginning because that naming protocol is huge. When you have 10 of these turning on in your classroom with no names and just a serial number and then students on their devices with their Bluetooth pulling up all of these different devices with no naming protocol, I've been there. Like I'm sweating right now just thinking about it. It's bad. <laughs> You're not getting anything done that day. So that is why we're here to tell you to go in and name your hubs ahead of time based on the sticker you put on it. Um, go in here and click to connect your hub. Let's see if mine does it. I didn't get that. Oh. Could you try again? Siri's telling me to be quiet. Do you hear her? I'm going to get off of here. No, I am still updating. Well, oh, crap. Um, let me turn this off. Let me go back to that. Sorry, I thought I was in the, I was in the wrong place. Um, you're going to click on that button. It's going to be flashing yellow and it's going to tell all your students to go there. Sorry, maybe we all know where I am. Let's see. Come on, buddy. Sorry about that. I closed where I was thinking I needed. I can't have both the app and the web app open at the same time. Sorry about that. Oh, my goodness. Now you saying I need to be. Oh, good. I'm in. I'm in update heck right now, Michelle. <laughs> anyway, it let me go to my slide. Sometimes. We will solve this. Okay, right here. We when you go and click on that, it's oh okay. Thanks so much. It's gonna um oh it's done. Yay! Uh, it's going to ask you to um, connect here. Let me get through that real quick. Okay, it really is very easy to connect. It is. It's not when you're online. It's stinky. Okay, here I am. Okay, I'm gonna unhook my hub connection. I'm gonna make sure I shut this down. I did, okay, I'm good. All right, so it'll look like this. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. And it'll look like this. And then it's gonna ask for your for your hub. I'm gonna plug mine in and maybe it'll do it quicker so you can see it. But you're gonna see a blue, um, a blue uh, Bluetooth I'm plugged into. So I've got two ways that I can plug in either with the USB or the Bluetooth. And mine just automatically plug. I, it didn't use the Bluetooth. It just used my USB connection. Um, but what, and I am not in 3.0 right now. Yours will connect quickly, but it'll ask you to, it'll pull up a dialog box that will um, say the name of your um, device. And you just click on it and hit connect. So that's the only difference you're not seeing here. Um, when I get this little green button, it means I'm connected. Um, and so I'm gonna connect that and it knows I'm Susan one already. Um, so right here is the renaming. And you can always go back to that button, move my windows box real quick, sorry about that. No, it's the boxes. I can always go back to this whenever I need to, to rename. Um, I would check at the end of class, like as a classroom management tip, 
um, you know, walk around the room real quick, make sure they're all named the same as the stickers, um, make that be part of your um, jobs that you have for um, how we're going to finish up that our names are the same. Everything's in this in the box ready to ready to pack up for the day. Um, you'll see here too that I have 100% on this battery. You'll get about a 40% charge when you first get the hub. So you'll have a little charge to start. I usually use the USB to plug in um, when they're not building yet, if they're coding or they're doing something else, I might have them plug them into their device. Also, I have, I have USB stations in my classroom that I can plug them into too as well to charge them. Um, so I would click rename if Susan didn't rename this really well or she changed the name or I'm just starting out, I can go here and then I can call this Susan Spike one um, and then we're good to go. And so then it will rename it for me um save and then i'm good it changes it right away also here you can look at the programs that are on it you have uh, storage for 20 programs zero through 19 and then for any of our data especially in our training trackers unit um, you would see data here as well um, that students can collect and it would be graphed you'll also see the sensor inside of the hub um, is picking up the yaw the pitch and the roll um, on this box here as well, you'll see what ports are plugged in. If I have any of my motors or sensors plugged in, it'll showcase that here. Um, that's one of the things when you're programming is to make sure that what they're plugged into um, and you have six uh, ports on your hub matches what the programming is. Um, so that's a little uh, tip in terms of uh, troubleshooting. Next, I can just click in here and there we go. Here we have, Again, it's showing the drag and drop um, and what to click on next. Um, and then it's only showing the pieces I need. And then I click down here to play. I'm at program zero. And I don't know if you can, so I'm gonna hold that up. I'm gonna click to play it. And it beeped and you can see my smiley face. Yay. And then it tells the students they've done it and it'll go actually to the next lesson, which is motors and sensors. Um, but um, again, down here, I can change to Spike Prime and it'll show me all of the Scratch programming blocks that you have to offer. So if you do have a student that wants to do something a little extended out from the lesson, you can do that here. Okay, so sorry about the technical difficulties, but that right there is that connects that hub connection. You have to be in a program to do it. It doesn't happen outside of the programming. Um, so, uh, and it's all that your students will see as well. Um, and then when they want, when you're ready to get into the units and lessons, you can just scroll down and go to unit plans. You can tell them which unit you want them to go to. And then the lesson will be right there for them to click on. Um, and there's Hopper Race too, all right? So I am going to go back really quickly to our I uh, kind of wrap it up here and then you be thinking of questions because we're about to ask questions. Um, but what we'd like for you to do is to learn through playing with it. So we'd love for you to go find, if you know they're in your building, if they're not there yet, when they get to your site, um, go get one, um, take it home, or if you have some free time during the day, pick a um, lesson from legoeducation.com, uh, go to that Spike app, just use the web app. You don't have to worry about the downloads yet if you wanted to use the downloaded app. And by the way, the one difference between those two apps is this. On the web app, there's no sign in, your students can just get right on it. So it doesn't automatically save their work. So if there is programming you're doing or competitions you're doing, they will have to save and download their program to their device and then upload it the next time they get in the web app. In the downloaded app, what they do on their device in the downloaded app will stay there and show up the next day uh, or the next week or whatever. So that's the big difference between the two. Web app, it, it's just a web, it's not a Google sign-on or Microsoft or anything. You just get in it and play with it Anything they do can be saved. There's a save option at the top of their program. You'll see the save icon and they can save it easily to their 
Google Drive through their Chromebook or um, on their device. Um, but that's the big difference. Download it, the downloaded app will bring it up the next time they open it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so get in there, build, do the code, play with it. Don't expect perfection. It's gonna be great, whatever you do, and you'll learn from it for the next time. It's all a learning process. Don't let one you know, mistake or class or something you had that went wrong, ruin it for the next time. Keep on trucking because you'll get better at it. They'll get better with it. You'll develop more classroom management and better tips. And we have so many resources for you and reflect on it. Talk to people in your, you're not alone. You're with a group of wonderful teachers, I'm sure. Talk to others about it. How can you use this in your content? Um, how do you feel successful with it? And then go to those resources and definitely join our, um, oops, sorry, we went crazy. Um, join our uh, success uh, platform for um, customer success. It's our community. It's a great place to get newsletters every month. You'll know the best information, the most updated information. Um, and that's a great place to go to. So I'll leave that up and then we'll take questions. Sorry, it took so long for me to get to that. And you guys are answered a lot already. Nice. At this point, if you do have questions, you can um, unmute yourself and give us a shout. A couple of people were asking, um, just clarifying as far as the renaming the hubs. Yes, once you name it, it sticks, um, unless someone goes back in and, and names it something else. So it won't revert to um, the default, you know, uh, generic name. Uh, the name will stick. Um, yeah. And you definitely want to do that before you give these to your students. Otherwise, I think Susan had mentioned earlier, Basically, it, it's chaos because everybody's trying to connect and you don't know whose is whose because they don't have um, individual names. So that's something you want to do with your hubs prior to beginning with your students. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's that's really helpful as one that we've we've unboxed and we're organizing our kits and we had the spike question, but we didn't realize about the hub. So you know, now we can we've we've named them with stickers. We can now go back and take yeah. how long did like so we're gonna have to plug in each one four minutes three three we minutes. Have 11 after, pallets full so we're yeah. we gonna think in that zone but we, we'll work get, away at them yeah if you get in a line do like a little processing so you can do multiple at a time but um i was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she's got like a four minute 10 second timer on the spike prime the mm -hmm. Essential doesn't take as long, but the the prime is about a four minute update, which is probably we'll have to do this. We'll have to do the same for essential as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and that's a little um, less time. That's like a okay. three minute, uh, right. a three minute update. But uh, yeah. Thank you. That's, you're right. welcome. We're so excited for you guys. We're excited. We're just trying to figure out what's the easiest way to organize and get everything out and. Yeah a way that a framework that works so we're not running backwards all the time so well if you have any questions reach out to emily she's at success at lego.com i can put that in the chat um because you're you know we don't want you to reinvent you don't have to reinvent the wheel like there's some good examples out there that we can share with you and i it's so important i love that you're spending time with that is getting that up front that organization because once you once those go like once you get them off the pallet and they're out there it's hard to fit you know like it's hard if you don't have it organized in terms of like where those kits are how you want to disseminate those kits and share them um yeah so that's good work on the front end but um definitely um reach out to Emily. She's our success manager and she can send, I think uh, Sarah just put that in the chat too. Um, she can, she can send you some examples of other schools because, because uh, that's what she's, that's 
her job customer success. So, um, and we want no, you to- and Tammy's on this call too. And we are actually going into our alternative ed program to work with students and teachers to develop our own SOPs about the kits. Mm -hmm. um, so like, we're just trying to like slowly do, and then we're just not letting the kits go. Our tech integrators will kind of like, let me come into your class and share these with you and work you through. And then, then sign out kits to kind of like keep a little bit of a handle on it because they could disappear really quickly. We yes. Find, so. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Where'd they go? So um, another, um, another just kind of a, a plug for something else that, that we offer. Um, if you sign up for those customer success newsletters, we do offer additional webinars, um, typically every month. Um, and, you know, we do this whole unboxing getting started webinar, but then we do one that's an hour long, where we do a little bit of a deeper dive into the actual lesson plans and the, um, you know, the resources around the different lesson plans. And we have a third webinar that covers um, additional Lego resources in general. Mm -hmm. So um, how to build your own, you know, Lego professional development and community um, and things like that. So definitely I would suggest, you know, uh, signing up for that customer success newsletter as well. It's super helpful. And I'll just, I'll mention since I'm here, we're putting together some additional resources for you guys. So be sure to connect with the state website and stay uh, tuned to their posts as they're coming out. Um, we know that you're just getting these kits and getting set up right now. So we're also working on organizing some things on the back end for you to help you with this launch and to support the integration of this into your system. So definitely reach out to success at lego.com. And of course, stay tuned to the State Department's website so you can get those resources that they'll be uploading there to share out with you to help you with this integration as well. To me, yeah, you guys. I really, I really appreciate that. Like we're all in this, like just open the box phase. And so this was really helpful for them to like get this done and do it well. Okay. And now we're going to go into classrooms and like, like we need chunks of it or it becomes too overwhelming. So I really appreciate like being able to connect tonight. And I know Tammy's here too. And we've been kind of thinking through of what we thought we should do. And it's great to finally have some concrete pieces. So we're, we know we're heading in the right direction, I think. So good. And, and Christine, I'll mention, since you have 11 pallets, be sure to hit us um, tonight if you can. We're trying to help the schools that have a lot of distribution as much as we can. So reach out to us and let us see what we can do to help you get some of those things set up. And just all of that updating on those pieces, we're really doing um, the best that we can. But if you reach out to us, we'll try to get you in the queue for that as well before the end of the month. Yeah, I know I have somebody what's trying to schedule this to come up next week. Um, oh, that's me. Yeah, it might be, but so so it, it was is. like Thursday, but now it'd be Friday, and somebody human is coming. But we're 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 just trying to get as much done as we can, um, you know, so that we're organized to get ready for our next steps. So um, lots of kids have seen the kits, and they're like all excited, and we're like, okay. we want to organize the chaos a little bit, though. So <laughs> awesome, cool. Um, I wanted to chime in too. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Portland has a lot of kits too. Um, we had six labs for uh, ordered for Deering High School and then four labs for two of our middle schools. So if the Lego folks are offering to uh, support with that, I'd love to connect as well. Courtney, if you haven't heard from us yet, please reach out. Um, in fact, I'll put my, uh, I'll I'll quickly text my email in here. Um, if you have a lot of kits and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what do I do? Try to reach out. If we get us tonight or tomorrow, we may be able to get you in the queue. We already have a lot of requests, but we're really happy to try to get people set up as quickly as possible. So just shoot me an email. I'll send it over and I'll see what we can do for you. Super. Thanks so much, Tara. Great. Thank you all so much. We've got a little bit over our time, but we really appreciate having you all here. Um, use our resources, and um, I think I might be seeing some of you soon. So, right. <laughs> good luck. I won't Thank see you. you. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening.